Hello Aquarius, this is Maxine Taylor, America's first licensed astrologer, and I have got your March 2019 forecast right here. Um, can't wait to share it with you. There's a lot that you're going to enjoy, I know. So let's jump right in. There are three celestial events the first week of March on the 6th that I want to share with you. Uh, I don't know what the statistics are of three celestial events occurring on the same day, but these are going to be very, very meaningful to you. The first of them is the new moon on the 6th. It's in 15 Pisces 47. Now, the new moon is a time of new beginnings. It falls in your second house of money. If things have been slow, if they haven't been moving the way you would like, and let's face it, just before the new moon, two days before the new moon, the energy is like flatline. It's harder to get things done on the dark of the moon, which occurs two days before the new moon. On the new moon, things start happening. The moon rules function and form. So you're going to want to find 15 Pisces 47 in your birth chart. If you do not have a copy of your actual birth chart, I'm talking about the actual chart itself, just go to my website, MaxineTaylor.com, and send me your birth data, the month, day, and year, the city and the state, if you were born in the U.S., the city and the country, if you were born outside the United States, and the exact time of day that you were born. And I will send you, free of charge, a copy of your birth chart so that you can follow along. All right? Now, we have the new moon, and it's activating this wonderful second house of money. Yay! Everybody says, gee, I wish I that would happen in my chart. Um, <clears throat> we're all one, everybody. What happens to one happens to all. And that's the truth. So the new moon is the first celestial event I'm going to talk about. The second is Mercury, the blue planet. Mercury is going retrograde on the 6th. Now, it goes stationary retrograde on the 5th and starts moving backwards on the 6th. For those of you who may not know it, when Mercury goes retrograde, Mercury rules communication, correspondence, and transportation, our mouth and our minds. When it goes retrograde, it appears to be moving backwards in the heavens. It's not but it appears to be, and it feels like it here on planet Earth. So we will feel the effects of the uh, retrograde Mercury about a week before it occurs. So when I said on the 5th, it, it is stationary, meaning it's, it's quit moving forward, and on the 6th, it is moving backwards. I would say on the 1st, we're going to start feeling it, but officially, it's right there between the 5th and 6th. We're not going to start any new project under a retrograde Mercury it, because it'll fizzle out completely or have to be redone within the year. So what we're going to do is tie up the loose ends of unfinished pro, uh, projects. Okay? We'll plan. We'll regroup. After Mercury goes direct, on the 29th, actually, of March, launch your new project. So we have the new moon and Mercury retrograde. Those are two celestial events. The third one is Uranus, this green planet here that moves from Aries, um, my way or the highway, Aries. I'm doing what I want, when I want, how I want, Aries. Yeah, that Aries. Into practical, logical, Let's take it slow and easy and talk about it over dinner. Taurus. Now, Uranus is rebellious. I love Uranus. It rules astrology. All astrologers are very, very unique. 
<clears throat> so Uranus, the rebel, is sitting on the foundation of your chart, on the cusp of your fourth house, on the sixth. You can expect during the time that it's there and th in, during the entire time it's in your fourth house and it will be there through 2025 that you can expect unexpected situations with family members, with your home, um, not necessarily negative things. For example, with Uranus on the fourth house cusp, you might suddenly wake up one day and say, you know what? I think I want to sell my house. And I think I want to tour the world for a while. And when I come home from touring the world, I'll buy a new house. That would be a very good um, way of using Uranus on the fourth house cusps. Cusp. It, this fourth house cusp this fourth house is a parent, whether it's mother or father, only your birth chart can tell. And so this parent can act rather unpredictably. Uh, your whole family can act unpredictably. Uh, and family issues can come to a head uh, with Uranus going through your fourth house. So we've got the new moon, Mercury retrograde, and Uranus moving into Taurus. Now, while I'm at this fourth house, let me mention that Mars, the red planet, is in the fourth house. Mars is what we fight with and fight for. It's what we put first. And <clears throat> Mars is in Taurus, stubbornly holding its own ground in Taurus, in the fourth house of home and family. So it could be that some land developer wants to buy your house and you're saying, I don't want to sell it. And they keep saying, I'll give you more money for it. That could be one way this works. Or that could be your weird uncle who just, you just never know how he's going to act. And you have to deal with him. Or it can be that there is a family feud that has been raging. And with Uranus right there on the cusp, it can come to a head to be resolved. Um, on the 31st of March, when Mars moves into Gemini and moves onto that fifth house cusp, you should have whatever family situation that you've dealt with resolved. Okay? Now Uranus is going to still be there bringing the unexpected, but hey, there's nothing wrong with that. So let's go over the rest of the chart. Okay, Venus, the planet of love, is in your first house. And this means you have the ability to love you. When you love you, other people love you because you are a magnet. And with Venus in your own sign, Aquarius, you feel right at home. You love you. Now, on the 26th, Venus moves into that second house. Venus rules the natural second house in the zodiac. Venus is the lesser benefic. It rules money and gifts and beauty. It's what you think is beautiful. It's what you love. You think you're beautiful. When you think it, everybody else does too. With Venus in the second house, you can create money. With the sun in the second house, you do create money because the sun is the center of our life. And there it is in the second house. Mercury's retrograde there, so things are unsettled. By the end of the month, when Mercury goes direct, everything will be back in place. And on the 20th of the month, the sun moves into your third house. And so you're filled with great ideas. You're ready to get in the car and go because the third house is short distance travel, even if it means just going up to the mall um, or stopping at the varsity for lunch, you know. So it's communication. That's the 20th. Something else occurs on the 20th. A full moon on your ninth cusp. On the new moon, energy starts growing, starts growing, starts growing, and the moon starts filling 
up and getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It's like a balloon that you're blowing up. And one extra breath of air in it, and it pops. It explodes. It comes to a head on the 20th. So the full moon is in zero degrees of Libra. Zero degrees is a new start, wherever it is. And so it's on your ninth cusp of the higher mind, higher education, long distance travel, or just seeing options open to you, to you that you never knew you had before. I would say get your passport current because it's a great time to take off running. With Mercury retrograde, that rules travel. So if you can, wait until after the full moon, wait until after Mercury goes direct, and then enjoy that full moon on your ninth cusp travel. So I think that's just about it. I hope you'll join me in person if you can at my full moon ceremony at the Phoenix and Dragon Bookstore in Atlanta on the 20th. There is no charge. This is my give back. If you're not in Atlanta, we will start at 7 o'clock Eastern time. Convert your time zone to Eastern and join us for one hour. Tune into the energy. People have told me that this ceremony has changed their lives. I know it's changed mine. So, till we meet again in April, may the stars shine brightly on you and yours.